Good afternoon. Welcome to Grain TV. It's October 3rd, 2013. I'm Logan Burgess. To my right here is Cody Bills to help break down the action that we saw here on a Thursday in the grain complex. Let's jump into fire tip and see where the grains closed. Certainly a day where we did find some strength in soybeans in particular. Corn, though, trading up just a quarter of a penny on the day. Soybeans, as I said, up 14 and a half cents for November. Chicago wheat up three. Kansas City wheat up just a penny. I know today's Thursday, Cody. We typically get those export sales report. With the government shut down, though, we didn't get those. Kind of what was the trade expecting, though? Well, you know, right now we got the expectations in there. Uh, wheat between 500, 700,000 metric tons. Corn uh, expectations between 500 and 700,000 metric tons. And soybeans between 800 and uh, 11, uh, or 1.1 billion yep. metric tons. The bottom line here is that we're not going to be seeing these export sales really maybe for the next week or even two weeks uh, and, and I think it's kind of kind of introduce a, an, an interesting aspect to this market uh, will there be uh, a, a country or countries out there that take advantage of this lack of transparency I mean you have reportable sales uh, you know typically if you make a sale over a hundred thousand metric tons you have to report it to the USDA uh, and now you know you can report it but no one's there to take that uh, uh, down is right. there a possibility that that maybe they take advantage of that maybe they book more sales now since right. it's not going to move the market yeah you know that certainly is a possibility especially given the price rundown that we've had here in the last couple weeks really after the September uh, WASI report and you know in general Cody I do think though that a bullish surprise uh, you know, at some point we are going to get this information and it might all come through at one point once things are back online. And it does seem like at that point that a bullish surprise would have a little bit more potency for corn and soybeans just because of the price action that I mentioned that we've seen over the last couple weeks. It's been extremely oversold technically here coming into Wednesday's trade in particular. Let's take a look here at the soybean chart and you can see that we are finding a little bit of strength here. But I think this is the time where people are going to be looking for demand side indicators to come in and support this market. And as you said, there's not a lot of transparency in this market. So uh, it might be a good time to do so if you're a big buyer. Bottom line, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if we had kind of a choppy trade here uh, moving forward for soybeans. Certainly we know it's technically oversold. And I think this rally could uh, extend here up towards 13. You know, I guess one thing I'm looking at here is soybeans really stood out today up 14 cents yep. relative to corn, which was mostly unchanged in wheat, which only had a very small gain. You know, is this soybeans move, is this fundamental? Do you think this is a fundamental shift or do you think this is just technical uh, buyback? You know, it seems technically at this point, obviously, you know, we didn't have a lot of fundamentals today to, to talk about or chew over. And, and as I said, I mean, the fundamentals got us to where we are now. Uh, with the September 1st quarterly grain stocks report in particular. So it seems like a technical bounce back at this point. I think uh, in general, the trend still seems to be bearish, but we might see a good little rally here in what might be a longer uh, bear trend. Well, one thing to note here is that when we do take a look at wheat, we'll, we'll notice that we were able to take out the highs that we printed uh, just a, a week or so ago. One thing to take a look at here is that the last 60 minutes of trade, we really started to sell off. One of the things that was driving the wheat trade earlier on in the morning is just there was a freeze threat in the eastern part of Australia. And I think that really contributes to that bullish story, which we've yeah. been observing, uh, that was really, uh, you know, the backbone of that bullish story is the export sales that we've been booking to, uh, to China and to Brazil, which are very atypical for, uh, uh, for those particular countries. You know, we're about halfway. Um, we met about uh, half the, the USDA forecast right. already, and we're only four months into this thing. Yeah. Uh, so the bottom line here is it seems as though wheat continues to have a bullish story, and, and some of this uh, weather uh, in the southern hemisphere is driving the, the trade a little bit higher yeah. here this morning, but unfortunately it looks as though we took a little bit off in the last hour. Yeah, certainly. We'll have to see what continues here on Friday in the grain market. We'll be back tomorrow to wrap up all the action that we saw this week and break down cash market changes. Certainly, it'll be an interesting uh, week for the cash market. Now we know elevators aren't reporting that September bid. We'll have to see how that October new crop bid has been kind of changing here uh, as we've entered the month of October. We'll keep you posted on that, as I said, on tomorrow's Grain TV. Thanks a lot for joining us here, though, on a Thursday that found a little bit of strength for soybeans in particular. We'll see if it continues tomorrow.